is Father Paul Mayer, who is a longtime climate activist and is on the board of IMAC, the Interfaith Climate oh, Action, Action Committee. Um, and, uh, and, and I bet also people would like to ask you some questions if you can stick around. Yeah, so, so let's ask uh, Father Mayer to speak and, um, and then you can have questions from both. Hey, well, first of all, I will presumptuously welcome everybody here to a celebration of hope. Because in spite of the grim news, we are celebrating hope. First of all, in the brilliant drama we have witnessed, thanks to Karen Malpied, uh, and also to the presence of Dr. James Hansen, who does something that is very rare in our society, more and more, that is to tell the truth and even make difficult personal decisions about which I'll say something more in a moment. And I have the pleasure, we were, we were arrested together outside the White House. And I <laughs> that this is an inherently spiritual issue regardless of whether one is a devout atheist or goes to church every Sunday, because as the indigenous people will tell us, you know, there is some, something inherently sacred about the earth as a mother, and the, the sacred web of life, and the interconnectedness of all beings, as we heard so beautifully about the Frog Brothers, and in this wonderful play tonight. And, um, but I wanted to comment a little bit about the significance, the larger significance, and this will be my interpretation, cultural, perhaps somewhat spiritual, moral, on the, the uh, very impressive, courageous decision of Dr. Hansen to resign from NASA so that he could be freer to tell the truth. I wanted to refer to an editorial that had appeared, I'm not going to get too personal, one of the great, allegedly great newspapers of this city by an allegedly brilliant commentator. It was called A Scientist Misguided Crusade. And that was before I even made this decision. And it, it, it spoke about the previous morphing of scientists into activists. And he cited Linus Pauling, Pauling, the great chemist who was also a peace activist. And none less than Dr. Albert Einstein, who was also an opponent of nuclear weapons. And so, um, I think what is important about Jim's decision is that it opposes what I would call the sin of professionalism. And this is particularly close to my heart because among my checkered career I came to this country as, uh, as, a, as a Jewish child refugee from the Holocaust where professionaling, professionalism was a very big thing. It was expected that judges and lawyers and artists and intellectuals would be loyal to the party. And um, so today, we still have that in our land. And Jim's action lifts it up that uh, don't sully your noble calling in the dusty streets of activism. Um, don't mix politics, you know, with art or with, or with the academic life or perhaps religion. Martin King was told a number of times, you know, Preachers should stay and preach from the gospel. Messages that Jesus and Isaiah uh, and Francis of Assisi would not have recognized. So I think that is the great witness that Jim gives to us tonight. And um, I think it's a particularly important witness for young people although we see many of the courageous young people out in Occupy Wall Street and 
350.com and so forth, still, many of them still believe, you know, that wearing the, the suits will get you to the loot. And that is the, the t I'm not, I'm not going to start a rap sequence. And that is what our great academic uh, institutions teach our young people, to be successful in the professions, so-called. So this is a very important statement, one we should be deeply grateful for. And since I don't want to go on too long, I want to re uh, share with you a very powerful statement I heard, I think, when I was at the, at the um, climate, UN Climate Change Conference in Johannesburg. There was a, 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 a shaman there, a medicine man from the, from the Inuit people of the Great North. And, and he said that the back there the ice was melting and the hunting and the ancient village sites were being destroyed and even the great polar bears were struggling for survival. And now he had been sent to the south as a messenger and as a healer, as our uncle, to melt the ice in the heart of man and woman. And so this is our mission, to melt the ice in our own heart and to melt the ice in the hearts of our leaders, in the government, in the corporations, and then the whole social scene and that this is an issue, Jim's witness reminds us, for everyone. Nobody is exempt, even parents, or especially parents, because it's the future of our children. So since Jim has a, a long, challenging road ahead of him, as we all do, I want to end with a prayer for him and for all of us. And I want to take it from a book that has had a tremendous impact on my own life, which is called Black Elk Speaks. Black Elk was a Lakota medicine man, a holy man, really, from the, uh, the indigenous people of the, of the plains of our nation, of our continent. And this is a prayer that I hope you will connect your hearts to. He said, Grandfather, gra Grandmother, Great Spirit, you have always been and before you no one was here. There is no other and no one to pray to but you. You yourself. Everything that you see, everything has been made by you. And the star nations all over the universe you have finished. The four quarters of the earth you have finished. The day and in that day everything you have finished. Grandfather, grandmother, great spirit, Lean close to the earth that, we may he that you may hear the voice we send. You towards where the sun goes down, behold us. Thunder beings, behold us. You where the white giant lives in power, behold us. You where the sun shines continually, whence comes the daybreak star and the day, behold us. You where the summer lives, behold us. You in the depths of the heavens, in the eagle of power, behold us. And you, Mother Earth, the only mother, you who have always shown mercy to your children. Great Spirit, Great Spirit, Grandfather, Grandmother, all over the earth, the faces of living things are all alike. With tenderness have these come up out of the ground. Look upon these faces of children without number and with children in their arms that they may face the winds and walk the good red road to the day of quiet. This is our prayer, hear us. The, vo the voice we have sent is weak, yet with earnestness have we sent it. Hear us. It is finished. Amen. And thank you. Our children's trust is filing and has filed some legal actions against the federal government for not doing its job of protecting the rights of young people and also similar cases in uh, state governments. And, and there are other cases such as attempts to block expanded coal exports from the West Coast 
and the tar sands pipelines and things. And I will participate in those. But in all of these, my uh, potential contribution depends upon the science. So in fact, I, 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 I will be spending most of my time continuing to do science because we, I have to be on top of that to effectively participate in these things. And the truth is things like the, the, the courts are an alternative to this dysfunctional Washington, but the courts seldom get far out in front of the public opinion. In the case of civil rights, the courts were eventually helpful in telling the government you have to desegregate schools, for example. But that was after the, the public had become uh, clearly opposed to, um, to the uh, violations of civil rights. And so we do need to get the public to be understand the situation. Father Mayor would like to say what IMAC is doing. They're starting a campaign uh, right away about carbon taxing. Changes are about to start a major campaign in the spiritual and faith community, lifting up carbon pricing and carbon taxing as a major moral issue. And if anybody's interested, I had an article in the Huffington Post about a year ago called the carbon tax, a moral issue. You can find it there if you're curious. Thank you. Thank you. Under my name, Father Paul Mayer.